Okay, so today I want to go into something um, called projection roto, which is a more advanced technique, I guess, to um, doing roto on shots that are challenging to the point where you can't really use traditional methods. So for example, when I showed you the roto earlier, we had a different part of this sequence and we were able to put a corner pin on the background. Um, so this part of the sequence, you'll probably notice, has got a lot more movement in it and finding four points that stay on the screen for the entire sequence and don't get covered by this guy at any point um, is pretty challenging to do. Uh, there might be a point, but let's pretend there wasn't, if there's not. So first thing you're going to want to do is um, pull a camera track on your plate. So if you've been provided a camera, great. Uh, if not, uh, Nuke's got a pretty neat camera tracker and Foundry have a video going into a lot of depth on how to pull a good track and there's like a million videos to sort of explain the same thing um, so here's one I made earlier so here's my camera uh, that I pulled from a camera track um, the track isn't even very good but it doesn't need to be uh, that's kind of the beauty of it and we're also gonna want the point cloud that it gives you so from the point cloud you can kind of see here's the wall and here's where the camera is and this is roughly where our guy is in 3D space. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a card. Uh, you can see the setup that I uh, already tested this out. And it works. So I'll show you. We'll make a card. And we'll line it about where the guy is. It doesn't have to be exact. And I think when I did the camera track, I even pulled a couple points on him by accident. So let's assume he's round right about here. And we're going to want to look at our look at our plate. We're going to make a project. 3D node, and we're going to make an apply material node. And I'll show you why we're going to use apply material instead. So we're going to plug our project 3D node in, and uh, we're going to plug it into our card like this. And when you look at that, you should see that we've projected our plate onto this um, onto this card, which is pretty cool. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to use an apply material node instead. And what that lets us do is it lets us keep applying material to the same geometry without having to change it. Uh, which is fantastic, because it means that we don't have to load... Uh, if this were heavier geometry, we wouldn't have to load it in a million times. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to set this to one on one because we're not going to deform it and uh, it makes it slightly more efficient. I don't think it matters that much, but I have a feeling it's going to be one of those things that stacks up. So, we're now going to make something called a scanline render node, and for those of you that already don't already know this, it's sort of your way of viewing your 3D space through a camera. So if we have it like this, and we look through it, we'll see something that's a lot slower, but it's the exact same output that we had before. Because what we're doing is we're projecting this onto our card through the camera, and we're then viewing it through the camera. So it should be the exact same. Now what we're going to do is we're going to frame hold our camera when we project so that it's projecting onto from a stationary point, kind of like a projector, but we are viewing it through a mobile camera. And if you just hit T in this, it will give you the current time or the current frame, or if you wanted to, you could type whatever you want in that box. We're going to plug this here. So what we're doing is we're projecting from a stationary camera, then we're viewing through a mobile camera. And I've picked 50 just because it's the middle frame and it means that we're probably not going to get too much extreme at one end or the other. Now when I play it, oh, sorry about that, as if by no magic, how about we do it the other way around? How about we project from the moving camera and view from the stationary camera? Whoops, daisy. Now we'll see that this guy is perfectly staying in the same place. Which means that when we go to do our roto now, we've removed as minimal amount of um, sort of complications as we can. So now what we can do is we can drop a roto node under here, or you could even uh, yeah, you could even export this clip out and use it in different software. But we're not going to stress about that for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here and. Uh, we're going to start on some, going to do some, no we're not, I want a forearm because it's a nice shape to show this off with. Cool. Um, and what we may need to do is, 
not yet. No, we're going to want to pop when we project. Never mind. And I'm going to pick a different frame. <laughs> I'm going to pick another different frame. There we go. There we go. So I'm just going to. I'm using a mouse for this, by the way. So you can't judge my roto. Just going to put a shape like this. Cool. Something like that will be really good. And I've seen this used um, by other people on some really crazy shots, and it's worked for them really, really nicely. So I know it's going to do you some favours one day. Uh, let's just say something like this. And, you know, the actual roto itself isn't the important part on this one. And something like that, just to give you the idea. And then once we have our shape like this, this is really bad by the way, I'm just doing it to um, just to have an alpha to work with in a second. So once we've done this, I don't know, that would be fine. Uh, what we do is we then do the same thing we've done before but we're going to reverse it, we're going to do it the other way. So we're going to project from a single point like I was supposed to earlier. And we're going to view from a moving camera. Grab it like that, grab it like this. Click, click. And then another scan line. Camera. And now if we view it through here and hit M on our keyboard for, let me just replace the original alpha, hit M on our keyboard for map, you can see that we've got something that lines up with our original footage, but now has the correct alpha channel. And through this node, if I were to um, do something like this to turn on motion blur, you'd see that we've actually got correct motion blur for our sequence as well. This is very heavy. Um, so this isn't always the right solution. Ignore the fact that it's um, pulling two frames. The alpha itself is what we want. And if we were to copy this alpha into our footage like that, you'd see we've got a decent motion blur. And then you could hack it if you need to and change it like this. But yeah, this is the sort of theory of projection rotor. And something I want to say as well is if you're feeling um, if you're feeling brave and you want to do something a little bit more advanced maybe, what you could do is you could take this camera and you could take this card and you could remove the need for 3D space altogether and um, turn your card into a corner pin. And uh, there are a couple of gizmos that do this. Card to track is kind of one of them. But um, yeah, that's maybe something to look at in your own time. But uh, yeah, that's projection roto. I hope that made sense. Bye.